We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. So glad to see all of you here. It's such a beautiful crowd. Wow. Really happy all of you have joined us today. My name is Minaj Khan, and I'm a software engineer currently here at Salesforce. I'm very excited to share a topic with you that I'm very, very passionate about, which is building successful habits. Methods to establishing your ideal routine. Some of this content I've learned by researching online, and some of the content is original and anecdotal as well. So let's go over the table of contents here. We're going to look at the current situation and the vision, then we'll dive into the need and benefit for building successful habits, setting up micro goals and micro quotas, setting up habit chains, talk a little bit about consistency, talk about reducing decisions, and then what do you do when you're well on your way and then you start to lose your habits and how do you recover from that, and then we'll talk about tracking and metrics and conclude. So before we look into the goal, let's look at the current situation. Oftentimes we find that we're living reactively to all the stimuli around us. And we're kind of slightly behind our routine. And sometimes it leaves us feeling like we're in a perpetual debt. And because of that, we're not able to establish our ideal life routine, which may include gymming, eating healthy, meditating, maybe for you rock climbing, or any of your other positive activities. And sometimes, because of the day-to-day -day nature of life, we may start to feel like we're stuck in a rut. So ultimately, the vision here is to live proactively. Set yourself up to be slightly ahead of your ideal routine. Keep up with all the activities for which you would find yourself fulfilling. And finally, use this robust routine as a platform to achieve your higher meaning goals. And this is one of the key aspects of how habits can give us a platform of passive success, which we can use then to focus on our higher meaning, higher achieving goals. So before we dive into the habitual actions, let's look at how deliberate actions work. Deliberate actions are those that require some kind of mental energy and commitment to execute on. Imagine the last time you cooked a new meal or a new dish. You had to read the ingredients list, read step by step, figure out how the dish is going to work, sit there, and focus on the entire time on how you're going to execute this action. And by doing so, you're exerting a lot of mental energy. This is completely in stark contrast to habitual actions which work very automatically, like how do you brush your teeth in the morning? or the way you get dressed, or the way you put on your shoes, or where you place your keys. All these actions don't require any mental energy at all, and you just do them very automatically, and they're very internalized the way you do them. And because habits are a passive part of your being, you just don't think about them, you do them. And by doing so, you free up mental energy to focus on more meaningful goals in the long run. Research also shows us that discipline and motivation is a diminishing resource. Over time, you cannot keep calling on discipline and motivation to get the job done, and it's tiring over time. So I want to share with you a story of how I originally came to learn about this in college. So when I was in college at UC Berkeley a few years ago, for the last couple of years, I used to snooze my alarm almost every single day for about an hour. When the alarm rang in the morning, I just kept pressing the snooze button six times until I started to feel a little bit more awake, and an hour later, I was out of bed. Even though my classes started between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m., I just had a lucky schedule. I was snoozing my alarm every single morning. You see, the issue is I had the intention at night. I was motivated. I was driven. I was like, tomorrow morning when the alarm rings, as soon as it rings, I'm just going to get out of bed, get on with my business, save an hour every single day of my time. The problem is you have the intention at night, but you're not able to tap into those mental resources in the morning because your brain is not fully awake. The people who do have this habit of getting out of bed right away, lucky you, have it habitualized in the body. They're not really thinking about it. They react to the sound of the alarm by just getting out of bed, feeling awake and happy, grabbing their cup of coffee and being on their way. So I was researching this problem and I was figuring out how can I solve this problem for myself, become more efficient. And I found an exercise online that I wanted to try. What you do is you get into bed on any regular afternoon or evening let's say 5, 6, or 7 p.m. You change your clothes as if you're about to get into bed. You lie in bed, put your head on the pillow, and you go to sleep just for one minute. So let's say the time currently is 6.01 p.m. You set the alarm for 6.02 p.m. When the alarm rings a minute later, you just get on your back, 
take a deep breath, stretch out your arms, plant your feet on the ground, and just stand up. And you do this about 10 times. So after I did this a couple times, I found that the next few weeks, when my alarm rang in the morning, instead of habitually snoozing it every single time, I was feeling like that kind of energy, and it was habitualized in my system. And when the alarm rang, maybe I snoozed it once or twice, but now, because it was internalized in my body, I was able to get up much quicker, and I saved a lot of time. And because this habit was then internalized, my mental energy was freed up to focus on more important things. Instead of dreading that morning one hour snooze every single night, thinking about it, thinking about problem solving it about it all the time, because once I had built this habit originally, I was able to free up that mental energy to focus on more important goals. So this is an example of how habits can make us passively successful. So now that we've talked about the need and the benefit, let's dive into some of the methods for how we can get from where we are today to where we would like to go. The first method I want to talk to you about is setting up macro goals and micro quotas. You see, large goals can be very intimidating, like buying a house or moving to a new role or redoing your entire house or your backyard, any such things. They can be very intimidating and you don't really know where to start and you feel a little bit paralyzed and it gives you a little bit of anxiety just thinking about how you're going to start these goals, right? So what you want to do is you want to think of the tiniest possible action that you can do almost every day or every week that will iteratively slowly move you towards your larger goal. Not only does this apply really well to general goal setting and goal making and the compounding effect of doing such a tiny action almost every day, but this same principle applies very well to setting up successful habits as well. I want to share with you a story also that I read online of this doctor who wanted to floss his teeth every day after brushing his teeth. Even though he was a doctor and he knew the benefits of flossing his teeth every day, he wasn't just able to get around to give himself the motivation to actually floss his teeth every day. So what he committed to himself was to just floss one tooth after brushing his teeth. You might think it's kind of silly, why would you just want to floss one tooth? But setting up such a tiny action, this micro quota for yourself, has three incredible benefits. Firstly, when you have such a small commitment to yourself, it does not weigh you down mentally. You think to yourself, it's just one tooth, doesn't take time, doesn't take effort, doesn't give me any anxiety. And you can commit to yourself to doing such a small action, and you can get on with your day after doing it. The second benefit of setting such a small quota is something called the Zygarnik effect. The Zygarnik effect is a psychology term that states human tendency that once you have started on an action or a path, you have an urgency to finish that action. Imagine the last time you put on a Game of Thrones episode and you had to do something midway, but you were like, I have to see how this ends. I have to finish this episode. The same applies to pleasant conversations or even an argument. Once you've kind of gotten started on this track, you feel like you really just want to finish the conversation, get to the climax, and then get on with your day. And the Zygarnik effect is what leads to finishing what you have already started. And because of this, Doctor, once he started flossing one tooth, he ended up flossing all of his team almost all of the time. And the third benefit is that even on the days that he did only floss one tooth, he got that habit in, and he got that habit internalized in his system. So even though he wasn't flossing all of his teeth all of the time, he kept the chain going and built his confidence and self-esteem and continued to build the habit over time. And that led to his eventual support for flossing his teeth as a regular habit. The second piece I want to share with you is setting up habit chains. You see, new habits are very ambiguous when you tell yourself, I'm going to do them tomorrow, or even when you tell yourself, I'm going to do them today. Because you're not really sure of when exactly in your routine this habit will happen. Let's say you tell yourself, I'm going to meditate today. Lunch happens, dinner happens, you talk to your family, you get home, and now it's time for bed, and you're like, man, I didn't really think it today, I wanted to start it, but you try to do it tomorrow, and the same thing happens again. The issue with this approach is that what you actually need to do is set up a trigger for yourself by placing your habitual action right after an existing part of your routine. Let's say you tell yourself, I'm going to meditate right after dinner before I do anything else, before I turn on the TV, before I talk to my family, before I do anything else, I'm going to meditate for just five minutes and then I'll get on with my day. What you do is you reaffirm this trigger to yourself and you try to internalize it over the next few days. And the next time you have dinner, you're going to remember, I told myself, I'm going to meditate. So instead of doing anything else and procrastinating, you get onto your habit 
and you will slowly start to build that pattern within yourself. Another way to think about this is, is to set yourself up with an if-then statement. Let's say you tell yourself, if I'm commuting on BART, then I will read. Or if I'm, let's say, sitting in bed or sitting on a chair or waiting for a meeting, then I will reply to emails. What this allows you to do is set up, again, a trigger for yourself so that when you find yourself in that situation, instead of doing anything else, procrastinating, checking social media, or maybe texting people back, you focus on the habit that you've set up for yourself and that will allow you to become more productive. By affirming these kinds of triggers to yourself and habitualizing them over time, you will find that you're able to internalize a very complex and productive routine over time. And also, research shows us that this method is much more successful than just having an ambiguous statement and telling yourself, I'll do it tomorrow. The next piece I want to share with you is around consistency. See, everyone's been told consistency leads to success. You have to be consistent to get results. One piece about this is that what you ideally want to do is be aware of the passive habits that you already have in your routine. For example, think about the way you get home, the way you open the door, where you place your keys, in which order you change your clothes, whether you say hi to your family first, or you go to the bathroom first, or you change your clothes first. Everyone already has a passive habitual routine that we don't even think about. But by being aware of your routine, you can start to tweak your existing routine and start to add pieces to it to become a little bit more efficient and start to add those triggers into your routine as well, just by being a little bit more self-aware. And another piece to this is that even a small, the smallest possible step in your consistency will lead to successful results. Let's say you tell yourself, I'm going to the gym every single week. If you want to skip the gym once in a while, that's okay. When you get home, try to do, let's say, 10 push-ups or just spend five minutes doing jumping jacks or anything. And this will allow you to internalize that habitual action. And over time, you'll start to build a confidence within yourself that you are perpetually doing your habit, even if it's the smallest, tiniest commitment. And you will keep the consistency up in your routine. Another adjacent factor to this is decision making. Research shows us that an abundance of decisions to make, or an abundance of choices in making your decisions, are both very mentally draining. This is why Obama says that he wears the same gray or blue suit every single day, day in and day out. He does not think about what he wants to eat or what he wants to wear, and that's one less decision that he has to commit mental energy to. And this is one of the reasons why my previous team, my current team, can attest to this, is why for the last about year and a half, I've been eating Oasis Grill almost every single day. <laughs> It's great food, I love it. It's healthy, it tastes well, it's Mediterranean diet, so I'm pretty happy. And it allows me to make one less decision every single day. So, as we mentioned, discipline is a diminishing resource, and it depletes mental resources to commit to other, more important actions in your life. This means two important things. One is that by reducing the decisions you're making in your life, you can focus on higher meaning goals and use the same mental energy to do other, more important things. The second thing around this is that one of the best tools to form your new successful habits is by modifying your existing environment. Let's say that you want to start going to the gym. When the time comes to go to the gym, you think to yourself, where are my clothes? Oh yeah, they're in the laundry, I gotta pick that up. Where are my headphones? Oh, they're sitting in that closet over there. Where's my protein shake? I gotta make the shake. Because of all of these things, you can start to feel like mentally drained. You're like, oh man, there's so much to do. I'll just do it tomorrow, right? You're just feeling tired today. It's okay, I'll just start tomorrow, right? What you ideally want to do is modify your environment to get you almost halfway there to completing your routine. What that means is, let's say you get your gym bag together, you get your clothes together, get your headphones together, get your protein shake, and just leave it by the door. So as soon as your reminder rings or it comes up in your routine, instead of thinking about all the barriers or blockers to get you to your end goal, you just pick up the bag and you just go. Or for example, let's say you told yourself, I want to meditate after dinner, as you mentioned, right? And let's say you want to use this app called Headspace that I used for a while to meditate and you need to pick your headphones. But if your headphones are not anywhere around you, and you're just kind of in the living room, you tell yourself, oh man, I don't know where I put my headphones, I don't really know if I'm going to do this, I'm just TV show's going to start in time anyways, you know what, I'll just do it the next time. What you want to do is set up your headphones or any such thing ahead of time in your environment, so that you're already halfway there, and as soon as the time comes, boom, boom, you pick up your headphones, you go. And this technique works really well. So for your personal habits, just think of a couple steps you can take ahead of time, which will, when the time comes, enable you to take that action. I'll share with you a couple examples that I use. 
couple things that I've done recently by thinking about these things, brainstorming is, and uh, my family thinks this is really silly, is I have set up an analog clock in the shower, where I take a shower in the bathroom. One of the, one of the things that I had an issue with taking long showers is getting distracted, start daydreaming, spend a lot of time, and then when you get out, it's like 45 minutes later or 30 minutes later or whichever it is, and you're like, man, like, where did the time go? So what I've done is, because I've set up an analog clock in my bathroom, as soon as I get in, look at the time, and I'm able to motivate myself to get there faster, instead of using sheer discipline to get me there, which is, as we mentioned, a diminishing resource. So let's say that you are now well on your way to establishing your successful habits, you've written everything down, you've visualized it, you've set up your triggers, you've set up your habit chains, and you've started to be a little bit consistent, and you're very happy with yourself. What happens when we start to lose our habits? Let's say a life event happens, or you get really busy, or you go on vacation, or just simply laziness strikes. How do you recover once you've already started your routine, once you start to fall off? One of the key things that happens here to a lot of us is something called the what the hell effect. The what the hell effect states a tendency to give up hope and abandon ship when you make a misstep. This is especially prominent in attempted diets. Let's say you tell yourself, I'm going to go on this special diet. And after a week or so, let's say you overeat one meal. When you overeat that first meal, you might just tell yourself, ah, oh, what the hell, you know what, I don't messed up. I'm just going to overeat the rest of the day, start tomorrow. Or I'm just going to overeat the rest of the week, start again on Monday. Or sometimes you might tell yourself, oh, I'm not really going to get around to it, you know what, let's just continue doing what I'm doing. You say, what the hell, and you just kind of lose that habit entirely. What you want to do is catch yourself before this what the hell effect happens to you. Forgive yourself. It's completely okay. It happens to all of us that we're not able to be 100% consistent all the time as we would like to be. Forgive yourself, move on from the misstep, and then retry the very next instance that you can retry, even if it's today or tomorrow, or as soon as possible, you can recommit to it and get on with your routine. What happens with me is when it comes to meditation or reading or going to the gym, even if I miss a day or a week, I forgive myself, and I'm like, you know what, it's okay. I've been fairly consistent over the course of the last few months or few weeks, and I forgive myself, and then I get back on the retry. What happens is that over time, by having this kind of approach, you have start to build a kind of consistency and a kind of confidence in your routine. So even when I start falling off meditation for weeks at a time, I trust myself that whatever life event I'm going through, whatever busy time I'm going through, I can trust myself to come back to it and start to be in it again as I was before. Another way to think about this is, is to focus on your accomplishments and not on your failures. If you're meditating, let's say, five days in a row and then you break your chain, instead of thinking, oh, you know what, I broke my chain on the sixth day, it's kind of bad. Don't think of it that way. Think of it, the total number of days that you spend in a month meditating. So let's say this month is 15 days. The next time, it might be 18 days. The next month, it may be 22 days. By focusing on the total number of days, that you have been successfully completing your habit and letting that number grow over time will allow you to get to your successful habit even better. The last thing around this is logging, contemplating, and retrospecting. What you ideally want to do is check in with yourself maybe every month or so and think about how things went last month for all the things that you want to accomplish. Think about what you could do better, what worked, what didn't work, and what you could tweak and understand yourself better to do a better job next time. And around this, you can do a lot of tracking and metrics as well that I'll show you. One effective technique is to note down all of the habits you want to accomplish, all of the triggers and their chains, and put an event in your calendar to check in with yourself after a month and reflect on how things went. This way, if you completely bomb on a successful routine or a specific habit, when the reminder rings in your calendar after a month, you will look at it and it'll be there for you to check off. And you can think again and see what was it in my routine or what was it this month that didn't allow me to complete the successful action? And once you contemplate it, you will be able to tweak your routine a little bit to get better next time. And this is one of the most powerful tools, at least for me, that has allowed me to build and become better over time. The idea behind it is that you can manage what you can measure. You can manage what you can measure, and if you measure what you're doing, you will become more successful at it. Set up key performance indicators for yourself and measure how you're doing. One example that I do in this regard, I used to spend a lot of time on Facebook, on my phone, and I wanted to try and use that time to recover some of that time as well. So I downloaded this app that actually tracks the amount of time that I spent on the app and on my phone. 
And every single week, it brings me a reminder, and it shows me how much time I spent on Facebook that previous week. And just by being aware of how many hours I was spending on Facebook, and I don't want to tell you how much it was. <laughs> Huge time sink. So when I found out how much time I was spending on Facebook, I was able to recommit to myself and try to see that number shrink over time, slowly and slowly. I want to share with you a couple learnings that I've had over the past year on applying these techniques. One of the main things, at least for me, was that the early stages of forming a new habit do require some kind of mental commitment and mental energy. And that's exactly when you want to nurture that habit. You want to check in with yourself maybe every week or so and see how you did the previous week and iterate much faster. And that way you'll be able to establish that routine in the earlier days. Just think about all of the things that you want to accomplish and just note them down in the phone and all the ways you want to improve those habits. After that, let's say you check in with yourself every once a month or once a quarter. By doing so, you will notice a huge amount of improvement a year from today. You will notice that your lifestyle has completely changed just by reflecting back to yourself every month or just every quarter. So in summary, we've talked about the current situation and the vision, where we are today and where we would like to go, and all the benefits that you would experience by having successful habits, by setting up this passive platform of success for yourself. And some of the methods like setting up macro goals and micro quotas, setting up habit chains, placing actions in your routine, and setting up your triggers. We talked about consistency and how you can be more self-aware of your already existing routine. And then we talked about reducing decision making to be able to focus on more higher meaning goals and modifying your environment to get you almost halfway there. And then we touched on recovering from lost habits, recovering from the what the hell effect, retrying if you fall off, and how do you move on and commit to yourself. So I really hope that you've gotten some inspiration and tools to be able to better form your successful habits. See, your personal habits may be different from the ones that I've mentioned. Maybe you want to take a walk in the park more often, or maybe you want to take your kids to the park more often, or maybe you walk your dog, or do a completely different action. Whatever your goals are, I'm confident that if you try implementing a couple of these methods, you'll find that you're well on your way to success. Some of this might seem like a lot of effort, but try starting small. Think of one thing you can do today or tomorrow that will help you get closer to your goals. All of this is kind of within the journey of self-improvement, making the most of your time in your life, and ultimately living proactively as a result, and being ahead of your routine with some purpose. And with that, I would like to leave you with a quote from a famous philosopher named Aristotle. He says, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Thank you.